This segment of Outdoors in the Heartland is brought to you by the Whitetail Institute of North America, research equals results, and S4 Gear, meeting the demands of nature and those who tame it. drops out to about eight foot deep right to them lily pads and right as it dropped off is where that fish came from. That's no giant, but I'll tell you what, for early springtime fishing, I'll take them little boys any day of the week. Larry, if you look close at that, I don't see any indication of being up on a bed yet. right up on the bank, it's tit, 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 tit. them little tack. Little bitty guy, but uh, pretty, pretty fish. As you can see here, right up on that tail, right there where my finger's sticking out, that tail had been wore off and started to heal. So, pretty fish though. All the way out here where this boat's sitting, there's only four foot of water. There's lily pads growing up in there where it's even shallower. This is kind of the deep edge. And one of the reasons you see me fish rage crawl or a lobster so much is it is such a versatile plastic bait. I'm fishing a Texas rig. And I can't determine these fish are up there relating to this shallow water. You know, they could be spawning, they could be post spawn, and there could be some in any stage but I can throw way up in there. The thing about this rage crawl is, I can fish it like a plastic worm or a jig, but when, like right now, I'm throwing it way up there and that water is only a couple feet deep from way up there and I just start reeling. I mean, I'm just barely reeling every now and then I just touch the bottom. I'm not working it like a plastic worm. And the appendages on the rage baits just, you, you can fish it. Good fish. <laughs> Now, now look at the belly. That's got that fish there has got some eggs in it. It could maybe have tail clean, got a little puffed up belly. Also, I want to tell you how hungry she is. Look in there real close, and you'll see just barely the tail. Of probably a bluegill. Fish on. One thing I love about a single council, you know, I do have two councils for this boat. When we're fishing like this, I usually take it out. Got a big old mouth on this girl, but by no means a, a giant fish. Big old mouth girl, kind of like pretty fish. Fish on under the boat. Not a very big one. Well, I can tell you this fish here, you look up on the bank and see them rocks. This fish up here, a little male been up there with a female and rubbed up against them rocks. Got a sore rubbed on it. Ate one of my legs off, but the good news is we got more. The bad news is that was a little guy. We want his grandmama. Perfect. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I'm out here messing around and he's up there jerking on lips. Fish it up in the shallow water. 
Nice little fish. Good little fish. Yeah, there's a, there's not much cover here, a little bit of rock. We're only in one and a half feet of water. And I can see an isolated log down there and pull it over that and bang, swimming that crawl once again, so. These lobsters are big enough that when you finally have wore him out down there in that head section, bite a little piece off, you still got plenty of crawl. This segment of Outdoors in the Heartland has been brought to you by Mossy Oak. It's not a passion, it's an obsession.